I built this uh, T-Match ATU in order that I could uh, operate on the 80 metre and 30 metre band as I don't have uh, suitable antennas for those bands and I wanted to use my 40 metre dipole uh, using the ATU uh, to bring down the SWR. Here's the schematic diagram, it's just a, a standard T-Match ATU. Uh, two variable capacitors and uh, switchable uh, inductors. The contents there, uh, all the components there, you can see in this photograph. Uh, the next, uh, the next one here shows the components mounted in the box, and uh, ready to be wired up. And uh, there's the tapped coil. More details of that later, and. Uh, it's tappable for various inductances. There's everything wired up and uh, ready to go for testing. And uh, there's the complete project showing the bottom half as well with the uh, SO239 uh, sockets for the uh, input and output. Okay, I'm going to explain the uh, operation of the T-match. It's called a T-match because you've got the horizontal here composed of the uh, capacitors and you've got the uh, vertical part of the T here uh, which uh, is composed of the selection of inductances. Now the circuit is shown in the bypass position at the moment so the, uh, the radio, the transceiver goes directly through the switch, the bypass switch, and out to the antenna. So to complete the, uh, the capacitors are uh, shorted out and the inductances are uh, isolated. When the, uh, when the switch, when it's not in the bypass mode, in other words, when the uh, T-match is in, uh, in action, the uh, this switch would normally be open so the uh, capacitances come into play and this switch would be closed so the uh, the selection of inductances uh, uh, would be uh, available now as i said i uh, for 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 uh, 80 meters i found that the 270 pfs were not sufficient so i uh, i added two switches s3 and s4 which switch in uh, two fixed capacitors when required, each approximately uh, 200 PF each. So uh, when not in bypass mode, the transceiver, uh, the signal from the, the output from the, the, the transceiver will go through the, uh, the capacitive setup here and down through the, uh, the upright of the T because this switch here will be closed and uh, the rotary switch here will select the uh, the appropriate inductance. The uh, inductance or the coil was uh, wound on a T forty or T ninety four two uh, toroid core, and uh, I had it tapped at the various uh, there's twelve actually. Uh, different inductances available and uh, they're selected by this uh, the rotary switch here over here you'll see the uh, you'll see uh, some taps I've calculated these uh, inductances from an online calculator uh, relevant to the uh, T42 or T92 sorry T94 2 now having said that these are just guidelines in my own uh, case, what I did was I uh, went straight in on the first tap. Uh, is uh, I, I selected uh, nine as the first tap. I didn't go with these 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and that allowed me to make the uh, larger uh, the larger uh, inductances closer to each other. Uh, I found that the final, uh, the total inductance uh, 
was not 19. It was about, in my case, about 14 or so. So, uh, as I say, this, this chart is just shown as a suggestion, but it's up to each individual there to uh, wind them as required. I used a... Uh, I used a uh, an inductance meter there to uh, to measure the inductances in my case. I'm not going to quote what my actual inductances are, but you can use that uh, chart there as a general guideline, and uh, you can refer to the online uh, uh, calculator for the various toroids, and it'll tell you how many windings where to tap it. So. Uh, Next, we need to see the ATU in action, and uh, that that will follow shortly. Okay, uh, for this uh, demonstration, I'm on the uh, 80 meter band, and I have the bypass switch activated here. So the SWR there through the uh, direct to the antenna. It's a 40 meter dipole I'm working on as my antenna. So you can see there the SWR is. Uh, 3.5 in the bypass mode. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch in the ATU and uh, we see the SWR there is 5.7. Now I've, I, I've preset this up so uh, you don't have to go through all the, 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 the settings but what I found I needed both of the uh, fixed capacitors to be switched in parallel with the variables so uh, when I switched them in there, you can see the SWR drops to about 2.3. But I haven't yet tuned the uh, variable uh, capacitors here. So let's try that. My uh, antenna analyzer has gone to sleep. So uh, let's try it there. We can see the SWR dropping there using this capacitor. And then we'll try and get it down again a little bit more. So there's an SWR of 1.0 to 1. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, I preset the uh, the inductor here, the relevant inductor. But just to show you that I have it correctly switched, I'm going to switch to another setting. And you can see the SWR flies up to 5.5. .5. So uh, back again to the correct inductor. And we're back down again. SWR is... Uh, almost 1.1 well it's 1.1 it's nearly uh, SWR is 1 to 1 nearly uh, SWR there so I'm quite pleased with that so that's my 40 meter dipole on the 80 meter band okay for this clip I'm on the uh, 30 meter band and uh, in bypass mode Let's see what the SWR is. It's it's two, which isn't too bad. Two to one. But I want to get it down to as near one to one as possible. So I'm going to uh, switch uh, in the ATU. Now I've preset uh, things here a little bit to uh, save time. Uh, I've set the, uh, the correct uh, inductance setting. And I'm approximately on the right setting here for the uh, capacitors. I don't need the, I don't need the two uh, fixed capacitors in parallel with the, uh, with the variable capacitors for this. So uh, let's try and get the SWR down now. There, one point four, one point three. If I didn't have the uh, camera here, I'm sure I'd get it down lower. But you can see there uh, how well it works. I'll try the other one here. They're interdependent. So uh, I could work away there and get a yeah, 1.4 to 1 SWR on the 30 meter band using my uh, 40 meter dipole so uh, that's it uh, i'm quite pleased with the end result of the uh, whole project and uh, what i'll do is uh, 
I'll try it on the uh, on the transceiver now in the next clip. I won't try it on both bands. I'll just give a demonstration on one band. So seven three for now, and I catch up with you again on the uh, when I have the uh, transceiver connected. Right, I'm set up now to check the uh, ATU operating on the 80 meter band. I'm on uh, 3.560 megahertz there, as you can see, and I'm straight through the ATU. So I'm in bypass mode. So let's check what the SWR is like there. And uh, I need to send out a carrier. So, uh, first of all, I'll set full scale deflection on the uh, SWR meter. And uh, it's, it's about there anyway, I'm about right. And reflect it very, very high, very high SWR there. So now I need to switch in the, uh, I need to switch in the ATU. And I know I need the two parallel capacitors. And uh, <laughs> there you can see the SWR has uh, dropped down. The two capacitors there are uh, they're interdependent on each other. But uh, you can see there the SWR. I preset it, but you can see there, just to save time, I set it up. And you can see there, uh, very low SWR there now. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, if I switch in a, a different inductance, you'll see the uh, SWR will increase. So uh, there's the, uh, the suitable inductance setting there. So uh, once again, just to check, forward full-scale deflection set and reverse SWR, one-to-one -one SWR there going through the ATU. So quite pleased with that. I'm not going to bore you with the uh, 30 meter uh, band. It will be uh, similar. Just going to switch off now. I don't want to burn out my final transistor. So uh, quite pleased with the ATU working well and uh, very satisfactory uh, result from Echo India 5 Echo Mike.